Welcome to Electron Online. Now you may wonder why we have that special rule for linear inequalities and why it works in the first place. Because you may say, okay, if I multiply or divide by a negative number, I simply have to flip the inequality sign around. But why and, and how does that work? And why is that correct? So we're going to try and illustrate that point. We're going to start with something simple. X is greater than negative three. If we're going to graph that, we put a little circle around the negative three because we know it does not include the negative three. And then we realize all points greater than that will satisfy that inequality. So any point greater than negative three or any number greater than negative three will satisfy that inequality if we substitute it into x. But let's say now we're going to multiply both sides of the inequality with a negative number and not apply the rule by flipping the inequality sign. So we multiply the left side by negative one and we multiply the right side by negative one. If that was an equal sign, just an equal sign, then that would be perfectly fine. But we cannot do that with an inequality sign. And let's see why not. So if we didn't flip the inequality sign, we now end up with negative x is greater than three. So the negative three became a positive three and the positive x became a negative x, but we kept the inequality sign the same and that should not be correct. So let's plug in some test values to see what happens. If we let x equal negative two, then we end up with a negative times a negative two greater than three, two greater than three, and we see that is not correct. So x equal negative two is not a solution. How about x equals negative three? When we plug in x equals negative three in here, we get negative times a negative three greater than three, question mark, three greater than three, the answer is no. So that's also not a solution. How about x equals negative four? Well, if you plug in x equals negative four, we get a negative times a negative four, which is a positive four, that is greater than three. So that is part of the solution. And if we plug in x equals negative five, a negative times a negative five gives us a positive five, and again, that's greater than three, so that's a solution as well. So you begin to see that any value for x that is smaller than a negative three will satisfy this new inequality, which means all the numbers to the left of negative three, which is not the same as what we had originally here with the original problem. So this must be the wrong answer. And the reason why it's the wrong answer, because we did not, we did not follow the rule, we did not flip the inequality sign. So let's now flip the inequality sign and see what happens. We're going to multiply both sides by negative one, and instead of having greater than negative three, we now have a smaller than. Of course, the negative three becomes a positive three, and the positive x becomes a negative x, but since we multiply both sides by a negative number, we have to flip the inequality sign around. Now let's try some test values. So now we end up with negative x smaller than three. So let's x equal negative four, and a negative times a negative four is a positive four, which is not smaller than three, which means that x equal negative four is not part of the solution. How about if x is negative three? I plug in negative three over here, I get minus times a minus three is a positive three, which is not smaller than three. So x equals negative three is also not part of the solution. But now when I plug in x equals negative two, in here, I have a negative times a negative two, which is a positive two, and that is indeed smaller than the negative three, so that's a solution, and, or part of the solution, and x is equal to negative one, when I plug it in here, a negative times a negative one is a positive one, again, which is smaller than three, so that's part of the solution as well. So you can see that all values for x that are smaller, or no, not smaller, but greater than negative three, because negative two is greater than negative three, negative one is greater than negative three, so all values greater than negative three will satisfy this inequality, of course, not including three, that's the end point, not including three, but notice that our solution here is exactly the same as our original solution. So by multiplying both sides by negative one, but then flipping the inequality sign around, we end up with the exact same solution or same inequality we had before, which tells us if we're going to multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, we must flip the inequality sign around to have the same exact result. And that is why that happens.